we're going to go back to the pyramid and then truck on down to the movement models or the mechanics and talk a little bit about that before we really get into mechanics. The first thing we're going to talk about in the mechanical code of the movement models are five phases of hitting. First is the stance. Second is the power position. Third is the approach. And fourth is the contact. And fifth is finish. But what people forget is that between stance and power position is the timing phase. So now I'm going to show you something that I learned as a minor league player in the San Francisco Giants organization by Jim Lefevre. He came up with this, um, the five phases of hitting, five phases of hitting. And I, and I learned it and, you know, of course I learned it right away and I, you know, I got in the different positions, which I'm going to show you, but there was just something missing to it. And um, though it was valuable in some ways, and I'm going to tell you how. So the five phases of hitting, what, what they are, it's not really a, well, they're not movements, they're positions. And because they're positions, they're just signposts. They let you know where you're going, or first where you are, then where you're going, and then how you got there. You know, once you get there, you're like, okay, I came from where, and then where am I, and then where am I going? What's in the next phase? So it allows you to orient. It also allows you to um, be able to identify the different systems that uh, you might be having problems in. It's important to understand whether it's your lever system, whether it's your core motor, um, whether it's, it's your angles, your plane, um, whether you got slack in the, in the system or, or, or whether you're pausing with your timing. Whatever it is, as a coach, you have to be able to identify the system first and then decide from the one or two, three things that could be going wrong and then and go ahead and find a drill for that young man to, to, to do. Um, for example, uh, okay, well, let's just begin. First, we got, uh, let's use a, a regular bat. It's a heavier bat. I haven't used a bat like this in a long time. This is, this is a big old 34 and a half, 33 ounce. This is, you know, I mean, this, is, this is what I use, but it's a big war club, you know. But as you'll see as we go through this, you'll see why, um, it's some of the reasons why I, I did the things the way I did. Okay, the first position is your setup, your stance, okay? So your setup obviously can be 50-50, you know, or 60-40, 90-10, or 99-1. Really doesn't matter. As long as you're in control to be able to synchronize a pitch and go and be on time and transfer on time. Because remember, your timing is transferring on time, okay? And being able to transfer, get your weight through the ball, and then return. So controlling your forward movement. It's not about staying back, it's about being on time and controlling your forward movement. So the first position that we're gonna begin at, the first signpost, is your stance. Okay, so here's my stance. I like to hold, hold the bat fairly vertical, and the reason why is because wherever it was, wherever I had my bat, and I changed my setup throughout the years uh, when I was a young player, but I always would end up here, you know? No matter where I was, I'd end up right about here. And if I think about it, if I'm gonna play tug of war, this is about the position I'm gonna be in. Now I want you to notice that as you begin, my arms are nice and relaxed here, okay? In my, in my, uh, my bat's at a 45 degree angle, right? So it, you know, as I lean over, let my arms out a little bit. Now you look at my back elbow and it looks like it's it's not up, it looks like it's kind of down. Well, the farther I get it away from my body, you see, it starts to look up, even though it's really the same orientation as this, okay? So no matter where I'm at, it's pretty much in the same position, okay? All right, now I'm not saying that's for everybody, but I'm just saying that, you know, you could do whatever you want. You could bring your elbow up here, um, like uh, um, Adrian Gonzalez, for example, you know, he's up here like this, and so is um, uh, George Brett, for example. He was way up here, right? Well, 
as long as you get a little bit of forward inertia, it's not much, it doesn't take much. You see young players that are in this position and then they try to just use their hands. Well, I'm sorry, but you don't just use your hands when you hit, you know? It's not just your hands. If, if, if you try to get your hands going, and that, that comes from a false understanding of where you get your pop from. If your pop comes through your hands, if the energy is delivered through your hands, that's not where it began, okay? So that's not a good idea to begin trying to, to, to generate energy from your hands. Your hands are just hanging along for the ride, okay? And they're going to actually deliver the energy. As a matter of fact, with most young players, the hands are where they lose most of the energy in their swing. They don't deliver all of the energy through, the, through their lever system, through their hands, into the bat, um, through the barrel into the ball. And they don't because they break down somewhere in this grip lever system. Um, they get, you know, over fi fixated on, on, you know, gripping it maybe here up in, the, up in the fingers or whatever. Big league hitters that I know, everybody that I ever played with, everybody that I watch. Now, when I'm looking at a guy, I can see. I'm not guessing, I can see. You try to get as much surface area as you possibly can. You're not trying to add whip. You're not trying, you don't need whip. Because look, if I don't, if I eliminate the whip, okay, and I'm not saying it's not here, but I'm not saying it's, it's up there either. It's, it's everywhere, okay. I got a lot of surface area, okay. So there is enough whip in the wrist right here. I don't want any more because when I go to swing, I'm going to let it go, see. That would be enough. But there's enough. I, don't, I can't generate more power by adding hands because I'm not going to be able to hang on to it. Because as I go and I transfer and I do my core turn and I deliver my energy, extra hand energy, all I'm going to do is lose energy at that point. That's just going to be a leaky faucet. Okay, So you want to grab that bat nice and firm with both hands. Okay. Um, and as far as palm up, palm down is concerned, just go to contact. Everybody, you know, the diameter of the handle and the, and the size of your hands will determine that. So what you do is you go to contact. You feel what's strong at contact. Feel a barrel above your hands position. You know, your hands like it's a punch, punch. Like both hands are going to punch. And that's the position. It's generally, it's like this position, like you're weightlifting. It's not that position necessarily but it 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 I don't want to split hairs here but you know when you're holding it when you're feeling it your wrists are a little bit cocked okay so um uh as soon as you you know as soon as you feel that your arms are extended now as far as you're feeling contact when you're in your stance and you go like this you definitely want to get your arms free from your body and let your arms lock out and what you don't want to do is you don't want to think of it, arms e extension, as this thing's pushing, this thing's pulling. No, they both push. They both push. So if I'm going to push against something, it's, they're both pushing, okay? So they're both pushing, that's hitting through it. Because when I strike the ball, this hand doesn't just stop. When I strike it, this hand is continuing to go. So I hit a ball across my face, but this arm continues to fly around my body. So if you see from the front, here it continues to go around your body until it gets all the way across as far as it'll go, okay? All right, okay. So, here's your stance. You wanna get in a position that's, uh, you wanna have good posture, you wanna line your levers up, okay? You wanna make sure your levers are lined up. You have good lever alignment. Um, what you'll see at this point is you'll see guys you know, go like this, just, you know, try to cock the wrist and then slide it up. That's not good. You wouldn't want to hit and have your hands go like this and then like that. You want your lever to fire with the most energy possible, which would be like this. Okay, a full firing of the lever. All right, so you need to learn how to fold this lever and fold this lever all the way up. Fold it down, let it hang down on your side, and fold it up all the way. Fold it down without moving your elbow a whole lot. Fold it up. Fold it down.
Fold it up. Okay, what I'm not doing is I'm not doing this. Fold it up. Okay, I'm not just coming to there. Okay, or I'm not just going part way. And I'm not doing this. Okay, I'm folding it up. So that means I get a, a, a complete unfold as I go and extend my levers. All right? So your levers need to fold and unfold. And once they start to feel like you can fold and unfold, then you start to feel the orientation of where they need to be. If you're having trouble with it, grab a, a I don't know, a 20-pound dumbbell or a 15-pound dumbbell. Just grab the dumbbell in your top hand. You would not grab a dumbbell at a place that wouldn't have your leverage. You would always grab it where you were about the strongest. And then, then put your other hand over the top of it. So that way you can cock and uncock. You, you're not going to go like this, and you're not going to be kind of awkward. You're going to be, you're going to hold that weight with, with a lot of leverage, just instinctual leverage. So grab something with your top hand, hold it up. You're, you're definitely not going to go like this. You know, you're going to hold it comfortable. All right? So that's a way to kind of get the feel of where your arm is supposed to be. Your arms should, you know, <sighs> players a lot of times have, well, they have a dominant arm, almost everybody does. And because they have a dominant arm, for example, my, my right arm, my front arm is the dominant arm. So this arm needed to be trained. I needed to train this arm. Okay, this arm needed to learn what the levers were. And at first, it just kind of did that, or it didn't know what to do, you know? But I had to train it. I had to train it to be, become more efficient. Because I didn't want this lever to, to affect this lever's ability to get the job done. And that's what happens a lot of times. One lever, the one that's not very dominant, that's not very coordinated, um, ends up screwing it up for the other one. So you should be able to keep the barrel above your hands, you know, go ahead and hit it. You know you're going to finish, with, especially with your top hand, you know you're going to finish down low because that's where it's going to rest. You wouldn't want to finish flat and come up here because that's not natural. Keep the barrel above your hands. Go ahead and hit. This thing is heavy for me right now. I haven't used it in a long time. But you'll notice what happens is is that the way I carry it, I mentioned this in another video, I carry it through the zone by, by, by being upright. So I take this vast amount of weight, this is a lot of weight, especially as it starts to gain energy. So as I develop energy, develop my torque, and as I start coming through, it's, I can start bringing it through the zone, it doesn't weigh a whole lot, okay? But then as I start to lay it down, or as it starts to fall down into my shoulder slot, well, then it's going to pick up speed. By then, I should be firing to the point where I'm not, I'm not feeling the weight because I'm throwing the bat. I'm taking this thing. Here it is. I'm just throwing it. Okay. What my job is, is to take the barrel, keep it above my hands, and try to take it all the way to the ball take it under control. As soon as I let my hands go, I've lost a little bit of control there. So I want to keep connected to my body. Okay? I want to get downhill. I'm going to kick your ass downhill. And, um, and I want to make sure my levers are lined up. So this good thing, have you ever, have you ever noticed like Barry Bonds and, and, and Babe Ruth, those, those guys, they'll go like this and then they'll go like that. So you wonder why they hit like this. You wonder why they would hit, hit, you know, and they go like this. And then when the ball's coming in, they come here. They can do that because they're folding, folding and unfolding. Folding and unfolding. Boom. Okay? And the reason why I can handle a bat right now that weighs too much is because of the angles that I'm holding it at. If I were to hold it at an angle like this, well, I can feel the weight. Plus, I'm not going to get a real, a real pure angle as it falls into the zone. I want to know that when I transfer, I bring it with me, that when I transfer, and that when I start to my swing, and my shoulders start to rotate, the barrel wants to fall, that it's going to fall in a pure direction, that I'm not, I'm not making it go in a direction one way or the other. Okay, so I'm letting it go in that pure place. 
Okay, so I got my setup. The next place after your setup, after you line up your levers so that they're oriented correctly, so that they have an advantage. And I think one last thing is that you don't want to have to go anywhere from your setup. Uh, one of the first things I learned in pro ball was, you know, you want your setup to be where you're going to launch from. I'm going to hit from here, then I want my setup as close to this as possible. And I know hitting off the tee and uh, hitting soft toss, I know you see a lot of guys you know, really rap when they won't necessarily be doing that in the game. And the reason for that is, is they start getting into the rhythm of the upper body, trying to get energy from the upper body first instead of getting it from the lower body first. And if I try to get it from my upper body, I'm going to go like that probably. I'm going to rotate my shoulders a little bit more closed, which is going to close my... Uh, close the barrel. I'm just going to close it. Okay. But if if I get it from my transfer, then I immediately I don't feel the urge to do that. You don't. You just don't feel. You don't feel it's necessary. Okay. So the next phase in the five phases of hitting, you got your stance. You got your power position. So that's the position you land in. Stance, power position. Your leg is slightly bent. Okay, it's flexed when you land. Okay, um, if the ball's off speed and um, you need to let it travel a little bit more, you land even more flexed. Okay, that gives it time to travel. So stance, power position, you land flexed. Why flexed? Well, as you're bending, it's like a pole vault hitting the box and it starts to bend as the weight continues to come into that pole, it starts to bend that pole. Well, are you losing energy because it's bending? No. It wants to straighten back out. Same with this front, front knee. You're landing and shifting forward. It wants to straighten back out again. So as you go ahead and fire, it's just extra energy stored into the system, which is why you don't want to get out too far, you don't want to get over too far, because it's so much energy that you won't be able to, to sufficiently block and return without leaking a little bit, okay? So it's a lot of energy, and you don't want to, you know, you don't want to go so much that you lose some, okay? But the idea is your stance, power position, all right, you land slightly bent, okay? Um, then the third, the, the third phase is, is the approach phase, stance, power, power position, approach. So that's, but it, it's all part of the transfer, it's all one motion, okay? Now, as my, as my core fires, okay, as I transfer and my core engages, I don't want to land and engage my hips because then I can't swing until my hips come to a stop and then my core can fire. So I don't want to, what I want to do is I want to land and my core to fire. Boom. I don't want to land and then fire my hips and then there's nothing that's happening right now. And then this will go later, which I won't have anything left. Okay. So stance, power position. Now granted, I can't get down very deep because of my knee. But, uh, and I might be over the, over the top of my front leg a little bit more because normally I'll, I'll be right in the middle here because as far as I transfer, I'll reach to find the middle. So no matter where I go, I'll always reach a little bit further to find a spot. So when I land, my knees will be bent about, about like this, okay? And they're bent, but see what happens is, I'm gonna have to straighten up a little bit. What happens is, is that if my core fires immediately, core starts to fire. That means my upper body starts to fire through my core motor. My core starts to fire, my hips come along with it. Now my hips are my engine mount, but, but as I keep shifting, my hips come along with it. Well, what's, what's, what's gonna happen? Well, my hips are gonna rotate. Boom, my core turns, and my hips are gonna come along with it. My hips are gonna get too far from my foot. It's gonna straighten my leg out. So my leg is going to get straight. It does not straighten. 
You don't think land, straighten out your front leg because you'll have more power or something. That's an observer. We don't want to be observers. We want to feel it. That way, everything that I tell you and everything that you claim to know when you're done with this class or when you're, you know, as a coach, as we're working together forever, really, that you need to not just be satisfied with a definition. You need to have a constant, a continuous flow of examples in everyday life to where it proves out in activities that you would do every day. You just need to be able to prove it out because, because for example, the other way, if I said, you know, you take a, a, a bale of hay, you, you know, you, you grab it off the ground, if I was going to throw it into the truck, you know, I'm not going to go, you know, I'm not going to grab it and straighten my front leg out, straighten it out. I wouldn't be able to shift and get my weight shift energy into this whole action, you know. I would end up leaking up. Now, my core would turn, but I would leak up. And I would have to keep coming up. If I want to stay on one level, I have to shift, and my core has to turn. And as it turns, my front knee will straighten out. So just think of it in terms of grabbing something and throwing something real heavy up into a truck or taking a, a big cinder block and throwing it. Or, shoot, you take a bat. Let's say the bat weighs about 25 pounds. If the bat weighed 25 pounds and you're waving it back and forth, okay? Shoot, I got to stand up straight because my knee won't, won't, won't cut this. So if I go back and forth, okay? I'm not going to go right before I release it. I'm not going to go like that because I'm not going to be able to get my last shift into it. Because if I do, I'll get over my front side like this. I want to shift with my knee bent slightly so that my core can fire and then this will straighten out. So the knee gets straight, okay? I think I wore that out sufficiently. All right, so the power position is it's slightly bent and that's the position I land in. That's right, that's your timing, okay? Land is when you're spiking the scale. That's when you're able to use gravity, you're able to use your weight shift energy and make your core turn a ballistic turn. You're able to make it ballistic because you use the springboard of the land. Ba boom Okay, so you want, to, you want to make it a springboard under control. You want to be able to control your forward movement. So it's not about staying back, it's about controlling your forward movement. Okay, so stance, power position, then approach. As I approach, this leg is going to straighten out, okay? But the barrel remains above my hands as long as possible. And from the hitter's eye, from the hitter's view, you want to you wanna stay, you want to keep the barrel above your hands all the way to the ball. I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to be thinking about dropping the, because look, if you drop the barrel too soon, look, if I go to hit and I drop the barrel there, okay, if I go there and I'm going to have to, you know, way back here, okay. Odds are, by the time I hit it, it's way too late in the swing cycle and I'm going to lose energy. If anything, I may be swinging up a little bit, okay? So if I want to be able to take a nice flat plane through the ball, and like I said, flat plane is flat in relating to the same plane as my shoulders, my core motor, and my hips, depending on the angle that I'm at. So whatever plane I'm at, okay? I want to drop that barrel as late as possible. Now, as late as possible is going to be about, you know, it's, good, it's going to be about three feet behind the ball, the earliest, okay? It's not going to go any later than that. If, if you do go later than that, if your hand, because, I, you know, you see a lot of young players who bring their hands in loose, and they, the barrel, the barrel dumps, they fire their hands early, therefore the barrel's got to drop out on, on the side of their body. They go like this, the barrel drops out here, and they can be really sharp toward the ball. They come here, boom, and they can be sharp toward the ball. They're not going to get on plane back here, okay? But, you know, there, it's about two, three feet behind the ball that you want to get the bat on plane. You have to give it some time to establish itself on plane. All right, so stance, power position, approach. 
at this, this is starting to straighten out because my core is fiery, and then I drop the barrel. Now, if the ball is not there, I may have to wait and drop the barrel later. Shoot, if I land, boom, into my legs and start turning, I may have to reach farther. So I don't want to drop the barrel too soon. I want to drop the barrel as late as possible so that I can hit that ball, all right? You think, well, how do you hit that? You're like, that's way too far, oh yeah? And with my bad knee, okay, here it is. You can still hit it. Okay, you'd be surprised, and I'm, and I'm in the middle still. A good hitter does not have trouble hitting the ball out front. He doesn't because he lets it go. He, he, lets, his, he lets the barrel go from his body, and it gets thrown. All right, okay. Now, the fourth, the fourth position is contact. Stance, power position, approach, contact. Now, in your approach phase, let me just add one more thing to the approach. The approach, you have the feeling of palm forward, okay? So, I feel palm forward, especially if I let a ball travel a little bit farther back. I'm going to hit that ball and it's going to feel like I hit it palm forward. See that? If I open up my hand, it's going to feel this. And when I get it out front, it's going to be here. Boom. So it'll be from here, palm forward, palm forward, palm forward, boom. And then I hit it out front. But it, it want to be palm forward because if I don't, if I go palm up, palm down right back here, palm up, palm down, I'm going to loop back here and I'm going to I'm going to dump the barrel, and I'm, I'm not going to be able to get on plane, nor stay on plane, okay? So, contact, you want to be palm forward sometimes, or ju just coming off of palm forward, from, from here to here. And then, of course, palm up, palm down, releasing, all right? Now, I want to take a nice flat plane through, the, you know, through it. Now, some people have trouble with the swing, and they swing, and they get in this position. Let me show you. The swing, not, you know, they can hit through the ball okay, but this arm doesn't just stop. This arm continues to go, okay? So it's going to go as I release the barrel, all right? And I kind of let it go in my hand a little bit. Boom, as soon as it rolls over. What you don't want to do is you don't want to yank your arm back like this. You see a lot of players go like this. Or you see a lot of players go like that, okay? You want to wait, you want to roll over with your arms straight. You roll over with your arms straight. Okay, so you roll over here, boom, you hit it, cross your face, hit it, roll over, and then you want it to bend and, and re-fold up here. So it, it's here, it's, it's folded up, you unfold it, then release it, and let it rotate around, and then, and then fold it back again. It's preferable if you do this and fold it. If you, if you do this and fold it versus like this and bring your arm behind your back. That's not, as, that's not as preferable if you do that. I mean, you can do it. I've seen guys do it, but it won't be as pretty a swing. You look, you look at guys and you... People always say, ah, you left-handers have, you know, swings, are, you got pretty swings. Well, I have a feeling it has to do with being right-hand dominant and being coordinated and understanding what it, you know, what, it, uh, what it's supposed to feel like to make the move. Plus, I'm seeing right-handers, so balls are coming into me, so I, I can approach the ball a little, little differently. But I want to, on contact, I want to finish as flat through the ball as I possibly can flat on plane, or if it's, you know, if I'm on an angle, if I'm on an angle, then it's flat that way. It's flat, whatever it is, it's flat through it. So I can hit it here or here or there. I can hit it flat, okay? But in your mind's eye, you want to try to stay flat to the ground in your approach. You always want to stay oriented flat to the ground because you don't want to, in your approach, start getting turned over. You, you don't want to get at this angle during your approach because if you do, you're going to get lost, and then you're going to drop the barrel here, and you're going to come at the ball at all different angles. I see young hitters, they'll hit the same ball. You know, you throw them a ball right there. One time they'll go like this. The next time they'll go like that. The next time they'll go like this. 
you know, the next, it's just every, every time they'll go to it at, at a different way. It's because they're not trying to stabilize in one, in one direction. If, if, you, if you just try to keep flat the whole time, you're, you're good to go. Okay. And my finish, what I want to do in my finish is whatever angle I'm at, generally on the ball means I'm, I'm, you know, my weight's on the ball of my feet, and when I stride, I can't open up from here. Because when I swing, I'm going to fall over the plate a little bit, okay? So when I swing, so if I, but if I stride, and my weight is, is totally flat balance like this, I don't want a regular balance, I want a dynamic balance. So that whatever position I have to put myself in, I can rotate around a point, okay? Um, and uh, so on the ball simply means that you're able to just keep your rotation, and it's generally if you're just a little bit forward. That's why most good, good hitters, good hitters can, can, can put the ball in their slot, because you are looking for a ball coming into your zone. You read the pitch based on the visual cues of where your zone is compared to your body, your shoulder, you know. So you're standing here and you can see everything and kind of see your body peripherally, or at least a little bit, you know. You can see the plate here just for a second. But like if you were hitting front soft toss a lot, after a while, all you see is the zone and how it relates into your shoulders. And, and so you want to be in position where if the ball's out just a little bit, that you can lean on it a little bit. It's not that it's, it's not going to be something that you're going to do a lot, but just a little bit so that you can catch yourself. All right, I'm flying all over the place, but um, maintaining your posture wherever it ends up, you want to be able to hold it there for a second. If you want a mature, developed swing, you know, I always felt like someone who swung in the batting cage like this, someone who swung went like this, and I did that for a while. I remember doing that. If you're going like this back, first of all, it helps you gain your balance. You know, immediately you can gain your balance that way. Because if, if you go one direction, so my advice is to get one directional swings. One direction. And give it a little, you know, you can do whatever you want at this end. You can drop it, you can do whatever. But not a... You know, not a recoil back here to help you balance. Because if you always have something to help you balance, you really can't feel the position that you're in in order to make the correction so you don't need that crutch. Okay, so you want to go one direction and do a little pinch. One direction and do a little pinch, okay? And then hold it, however you want to hold it. Remember, fold this up, fold it here, boom. And, and the hands, the hands in the finish, the hands shouldn't go limp, okay? It's, it's, if you're protecting yourself in an alley, your grip is square and firm and strong. If, if I'm down like this, and I was in an alley, and I, you would think I wasn't ready to fight. As soon as I do this, you think, hey, he's ready to fight. Okay, so here I am. I have control of this bat. I go to swing, wham, and it goes around, when it finishes, I should have control of it again. And so it ends up being here, swing, and it just kind of straightens back up again. If I, if I begin with a high, a high approach here, I'm going to swing, and the natural position is going to be here, unless I want to drop the barrel. And if I do drop the barrel, it's natural just to go like that. But um, uh, you look at A-Rod, even though he... He lets go with one hand, he gets to there. The thing about letting go with one hand is what most people can't do is when they, at least it happened with me, every time I let go, granted I was letting go early because I didn't know what I was doing, but when I would let go, I would go to the maximum reach, all right? So here I go hitting, and I'm letting go, okay? I'm feeling the max reach of where to hit this thing. Well, maybe on, on the first time I swung, I could bring my arms right in through here. You know, I could swing, bring my arms through here. But after a while, I'm bringing them like this on every one, on every ball. I'm bringing it to here as far as I can go. And if you're already out there buying time, you can't come in. You can go from close to you out. You can expand your swing out, but you can't retract. You can't bring it in. 
and have any success without creating slack, you know, without, without pulling your hands in, okay? And the carving thing that you see, it's not what you think. When you see a guy carve, he's not going like this, generally. He's, he, he, he's got a lot of energy in this thing, right? This arm starts to straighten out, and then at the last second, he, he's carving at the last second. He's carving with this arm straight. Right? You do see guys with their arms slightly bent, but that's not meant, that doesn't mean it's a good swing. Right? That doesn't mean it's his best swing. It doesn't mean it's where his power is. He may be just so dang strong that he can get away with it, but the fact is, if your arms are bent, you have slack in this system, but if you keep your energy going the whole time, this front arm will straighten out. So uh, 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 when you're carving, the carve is going to look more... It's going to be here, and then last second, you're going, to, you're going to carve like this, you know, carving, coming the ball, uh oh, it's in. You're going to go like that, bam, you're going to hit it like that. So it's not, it's not, I mean, that angle is a lot more, or is a lot different than, than, than this, okay? So, all right. Um, Okay, so I went through the five phases of hitting, and I did that pure because that's how I learned it. I didn't learn all the other stuff. I just learned the positions. That was it. That's all I learned was the positions. I didn't know what the positions were for other than I kind of intuitively knew the wall that the, these are the different places in your swing that you can identify. So quickly I started to come up with things that I was doing during those times, and that's what I'm giving you. But one thing I want to point out that is left off of this, between your setup, your stance, and your power position, what are we missing? Stance, power position, what are we missing? The timing phase. So 1.5 is actually the ride and stride. Okay? And during the ride and stride, all the way up to foot strike, I want to bring inertia with me. You know, it's like I was saying, even a guy who has a high elbow, it doesn't matter. They're not going to be flappy. It's, it's not going to hurt them as long as they have a little bit of inertia. And it doesn't take much, I swear. All it takes is, is that much inertia. That much. So if I take that much inertia and then go, in, in, in then go into it right then, just immediately go into a core turn and use, the, and use that energy and use it right away, that, that's plenty. You don't need but a few inches. Um, but you're going to find that you're going to need more than a few inches. You're going to need a helmet. Most players stride, they transfer. Some don't stride much, but they transfer about a foot or at least a helmet length. So from the front of the bill to the back of the helmet, that's about how far their, their, their head will move from their stance to their, uh, to their finish. Uh, now, there, there were times when I did a no-stride, sure, I did a no-stride, and I did that about, I don't know, once a week, once every couple weeks. I would go from a normal stride to a no-stride, and what it would do for me is it would allow me to be in position where I would, it would I'd be forced to let the ball come to me, okay? Yeah, you're letting the ball come to here, into the phone booth and you want to meet the ball in the phone booth, but you want to stay in the phone booth. If the ball's coming at you, you want to go get it. You want to have the attitude that you're going to go, go get it, even in a no stride, and you're letting the ball come to you. When it's time to go, you want to go get it. You're going to transfer, so you're going to go release, release, and you're going to free fall down, and then go get it. You're going to go get it, transfer, return, okay? So you want to go get that ball, but I would do a no stride in order to let the ball come to me. It was that feeling of letting the ball travel, because travel is a distance, and distance is time. Okay, so that's the timing thing. All right. Um, one to point out the inertia. You got to have inertia, uh, which is connected arms. About lining up my levers. People always say, you know, you got to get your hands moving. That's an op This is an observation. This is an observation because watch. If I go forward only, okay, okay I'm just going to go glide. You know what? I'm just going to put, put my foot out. 
okay? I'm going to start back here, and then I'm just going to glide forward, okay? So I'll be just like this, all right? So here I go forward. I'm going to glide forward. All I got to do, I don't need to go back. All I need to do is bring everything with me and then line up my levers. Bring my elbow in front of me where it's clear. Bring it in front. Bam. I don't need to go like this because a lot of times players will go like this and then they'll land, they get they, right here, as opposed to being like this, you know, getting ready for it to lay down, they get stuck over here where the, where the barrel's at the wrong angle where they can't undo it. They can't get around the corner. They get stuck. So you don't technically need to go back. You can do all your alignment while you're going forward. If you think about it, if you're going to take a sledgehammer, and this thing is already so heavy, you know, and I'm going to hit something into a wall, all right? I'm going to hit the wedge, you know. I'm not thinking about winding up at all. I already know I have more power than I need, okay? And that's the thing with hitting. You should feel like you already have more power than you need. So you're not trying to go and get more power. You're just trying to, to deliver a lot of energy into a small point, into, a, you know. So you can line up your levers as you're going forward like a hammer. You don't have to, you don't have to go back. And going back, like I said, can get you in a position where you're, you're, uh, you get caught. Now, don't get confused. If I'm not in a game, if I'm just swinging the bat, Sure, I'll go back, forward, back, because I want to get some rhythm. Forward, back, forward. Sure, I'm going to go, because I want more rhythm than normal, right? Because the part that I pay attention to is on the way forward, right? Right here, okay? It's the forward part. And I want to make sure I get plenty of energy. And I want plenty of length in my rocking, so I have a lot to go forward with, All right? But that's swinging the bat, okay? So don't get that confused. Don't think, well, they do it there. You know, they, they do it warming up. Okay, let's go back to the example. You should have a continuous flow of examples. If I had a hammer and I was this far from the wall, right? And I have a nail that's already, you know, it's already started right here, okay? Okay, I'm kind of far, okay? I'm going to have to come in there and hit it. Bam. All right, would I think, okay, here it comes. I'm going to go back. No way. I'm going to think, I gotta get, I'm going to hit that nail really hard because I'm a long ways from this thing. And the one thing that I got to do is I have to line up my levers to make sure I get it in there. Okay? You have to realize you have power. You want to get leverage. Therefore, you want to get your hands up to the ball. You know? You can see this. You want to get your hands up to the ball. You don't want to be like this all the time. Right? Pulling like that. You want to be able to get your hands up to the ball. Now, it's going to be at different places because if I'm hitting it this way, I'm getting a little advanced here. If I'm hitting it this way, then yeah, I want to be on the side of it. Bam! But I could be hitting it this way and being on the side of it. For me, it's a little complex. It's right here. Okay? Because here's the line. Here's the perpendicular line right there. So if my hands are right there, I've done it. My hands have gone past right here. From, from here to there, they've gone past because the ball's going that direction. Bam. See, they've, they've gone way past. All right. Anyways, that's, that's uh, the swing itself. A couple things I want to point out about the swing itself that, that you should know is that the swing goes around your body. The swing does not do some sort of oval. All right. So when, so when you think about the swing plane in front of your body when you swing across your face, um, some people will say, uh, you know, head down or something like that. Well, there's no power over your head. No, it's fine if head down is what, is what you've used and you're doing this. But you know what? I want your head to go from here, from, from front to back. I don't want to go from here down. All right? So it's important. Words are important. You, you, you need to say what you mean. I, I want to cross. I want to cross them. And plus, I have more strength in my field of vision. My strength is here. It's not up here. It's not up there with my head down. All right? 
So you want your arm going around your body. So it's going around your body. All right. So if there's the pitcher, and I'm going around my body, imagine the ball gets deep. Imagine there's a measuring line going toward the pitcher. So I got 180 degrees right here. So I can swing across my face. It's going around my body right like this. That's if I hit it real deep here. But if I'm going to hit it out front a little bit, I may want to do 180 degree pull. I want to do it at this angle, okay? So that's why you land in different positions and you pull. What you don't want to do is you don't want to keep going this way and run out of room and then you got nothing left. I mean, because eventually, I mean, if I hit a ball way out there, if I hit a ball way out there, I, I don't want my hands going that way. I want my hands pulling this way. If I pull this way, I got power. So I'm going to pull my hands across it this way. So I hit it, boom, it's going. Let my arms go around my body, okay? It's just, it's, it's really easy to start thinking in terms of out means you, that you have to guide it out. No. If you obey the fundamentals, if you get your head in position, if you get your head in the fire, if you're sideways in your approach and you get in a good position, if you, you know, cross your face, if you, if you cut the corner with your hips, so as soon as you're, you, you land, as soon as, as your upper body starts to cross your lower body, all right, as long as you don't start opening your hips up first, all right, um, and then get a little bit of weight into it. If you get a little bit of weight into it, the bat will stay in lag and you won't be able to hit a ball foul. Trust me, I, I could throw a ball right at you on the open field. You wouldn't be able to hit it down the line. Just from crossing your face, let alone crossing your face and getting a little weight into it and staying sideways, I could throw balls right at you. If you thought sideways, you know, get a little weight into it and swing across my face. And bam, you'd hit it like this. You could shoot. You'd be hitting him to right center as a left hander, left center as a right hander. Okay? All right. I hope that helped. Um, we'll go into some more of the details. I know you're going to have some questions about going around and those, that 180 degree thing, uh, where you're going to rip, uh, where my swing is going to rip. My swing is going to rip at 180 degrees. I'm going to rip 180 degrees and then it's over. All right? It's going to rip from here to here. You see, Barry Bonds used to stand here and he used to land. You know, his hands are back here, but then he'd land in this position and he'd rip, he, he'd rip this way. He'd rip sideways, completely sideways. And I'll, and I'll show you when we have a time where we can show his swing. Okay? Hope that works for you and I hope you learned something.